Titans, Rise 45 Vlog, day four. Uh, let's see. Yeah, good day today. Got back on the training. Like I said yesterday, it was just movement, so walks, active recovery, and uh, slept last night, which was awesome. So I, I think, um, you know, I, I'm attributing it a lot to basically just kind of, like I said, jumping into a new program and a new diet and getting back to work, you know, all, all these, all these, of course, you know, stressors in, you know, in two days that I sort of just kind of shoved into my system and, uh, and, and, you know, paid the price for it a little bit. And, uh, and, and it's funny because I, I took a little bit of time to sort of just reflect on where, where I actually was. And, and it was really interesting. So you know, it, it, it's kind of, and I'm sure you guys can all relate to this. It's kind of weird how sometimes we sort of forget context. We just kind of, just kind of float through our lives like, oh yeah, no, I, I know how this is supposed to go. And I know how this is supposed to work. Cause I do this. And, um, specifically, and this is, this is kind of, I guess the today's learning, uh, today's learnings segment of the vlog was that, uh, you know, last time I did, a I, I did something like a carnivore diet. I was coming off of, you know, an IF keto style thing. And I'm not like a keto zealot or anything. I just do it. It's, it's just one of those things I do every so often. And so I think the transition was a little easier, but this time, you know, leading up to leading up to it, I think, I think for a, a, quite a while I'd been doing something that was I'm going to say vertical style and I don't mean that I, and I wasn't actually following the vertical diet as, but as you know, a lot of similar stuff. So, you know, simple, you know, simple to digest foods, you know, things like, uh, you know, ground beef, uh, bone broth, veg, you know, simple vegetables, rice. And then of course for the, the two weeks I was with my family, it was, it was essentially, you know, SAD, the standard American diet and just eating whatever we ate. And so to, to just kind of cold Turkey from all of that, um, yeah, obviously that's gonna, that's gonna throw your system for, uh, for, for a bit of a, a loop. And so, and it's funny because the last time I did a carnivore diet, I think, I think there were a lot less people that had done it and there were a lot less writings. I mean, there were things like, obviously there was Dr. Sean Baker's book and, and Dr. Paul Saladino's book had just come out, but there are a lot of things they didn't really mention. So uh, I, I got to admit, I think, was it Tuesday night? I mean, Tuesday night, I, I thought there was something like seriously wrong with me. Cause I was like, wow, you know, I've, I had a little bit of acid reflux, like I couldn't sleep. And so I just, so I just did some research online and I think that's kind of another thing that I learned that, you know, I mean, just dropping, you know, A, I've been trying to avoid eating a lot of food late at night for a while, but uh, with my, with my schedule, sometimes that's just not, not feasible. I mean, when I'm on calls all day, you know, it's kind of, it, it's some, I mean, I'll say it sometimes it's actually hard to, to kind of just jump off and make food, which is why maybe I need to get into food prep, although, uh, or maybe just find a meal prep service, I guess, which, um, I have something to say about that very soon, but uh, we'll talk about that Sunday when uh, I think when my meals get here. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so so that's definitely something I'm going to be more mindful of going forward. Is you know obviously trying to not eat giant amounts of food at night, which I'm usually pretty good about. But the other thing too was just less fat. You know, I mean one of the things that I came across in my research uh, was that you know obviously eating a giant bolus of fat if you're not if your gut's not conditioned to handle it is you know like anything is not a great thing to do. So. And I wasn't eating a ton, you know, and I was, you know, it was just, you know, some eggs and, um, what else did I have? I forget what else I had, but, uh, but, it, but it was a lot. I mean, ultimately it was just a lot of food and my gut was just, my guts were just not happy about it. So yeah, but eating less, I mean, trying to, I, I try to stay away from that idea of intuitive eating, but it, it's interesting though, but, but because for me, it, it usually goes the other way, right? Like a lot of people you know, they'll intuitive eat junk. But for me, it's like intuitive eating usually ends up being, well, I don't really want to eat right now. Like for example, right now, I actually haven't had that much food today, but I'm not super hungry. I feel really good. Um, I feel like I'm pretty hydrated and had a great workout today. And so I think I'm just going to kind of maybe, and ordinarily, like I, I would, I would probably like, I'd probably go eat tomorrow. Like, I'd probably go have like another protein shake. be like, Oh my God, you know, I have to make sure that I'm not going to crash tomorrow. But, um, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think, uh, you know, I think back to what mid 2019, late 2019, when I was, when I was going through like, uh, my last kind of big, like weight loss thing, you know, I actually wasn't eating a lot at all. I was, I was, I was fasting a lot of days and I actually felt, and again, I felt really good. So, and which, and I was doing a similar diet. So maybe, maybe it's time to take some notes from kind of what's worked in the past and revisit that. Um, so that's, yeah. So that's kind of a, a very, oddly disjointed, uh, learnings for today. But, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll segue into the actual discussion topic of the day, which is, uh, let's see, day four. 
Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of my overall goals for fitness in general. So not just for the challenge, not just for, you know, specific workouts, but I mean, uh, I guess, you know, as a, as a lifetime pursuit, you know, not, not even like lifestyle, but lifetime pursuit, like what, you know, how does it fit into, you know, how do I see fitness fitting into my life other than just a thing I do to stay healthy, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's, that's probably like the first reason to do it, but as I've kind of alluded to in some other chats, it, you know, there was a time where I, you know, I thought, hey, I was, I'm going to do something in the fitness industry. I'm going to be a coach or I'm going to do online programs or I'm going to do remote coaching, which I'm still kind of doing. I mean, like I said, I, I, I've had, you know, actually up till even recently, I had some clients and I think right now I'm... I'm more in the space of writing programs for people. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know that I'd want to do remote coaching. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, if you if if you're somebody who wants uh, who wants a mobility program or an unconventional program, let me know. I'm happy to write that for you. Um, and you know, if you absolutely want coaching, you know, you see, I don't know, you you see something in what I do that makes you think, hey, I want that guy to coach me. Like, hit me up. We'll talk about it. But. Um, yeah, but beyond that, you know, I, th I think we, we we discussed this a little bit. Was it yesterday? I know it was, I know it was, it was sometime this week, um, of course, because this is that's the only time we've been doing this is the last couple of days. Um, but yeah, I mentioned that uh, it, it's, at some point in my life, I'd like to run a jujitsu program, and I use the word program because I, I don't. I, I think going forward, if I were to just say I just want to have a school or an academy, I would probably be. I would probably be being a little short-sighted because like I said, and I'm not going to go down this rabbit hole, but this whole shutdown lockdown thing, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen again for other reasons, probably equally facetious. And so, so I, I think if you're getting into, and not just like, you know, training or just, I think if you're getting into sort of any sort of physical, you know, brick and mortar requiring job industry whatever i think you should be thinking now going for about well, what happens when you don't have access to that anymore right and so so to be you know that means thinking about things like you know how do you how do you how do i incorporate you know info products i guess and virtual programming and all of that good stuff you know i mean you know subscription services and it's actually an interesting kind of design process for me because one of the things that I think about when I think about, um, you know, running, you know, teaching martial arts, teaching jiu-jitsu, teaching grappling, whatever. And, and again, you know, for those of you who, anybody who trains with me, who's listening to me, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying like I'm going to start this soon. This is like many years down the road. So, <clears throat> um, but I think about how, you know, how, how am I going to incorporate all the stuff I've done um, from a learning standpoint in fitness, you know, like all the continuing ed I've done, you know, all the mobility like learning I've done. And it, it you know, when, when I put it that way, it's, it's probably pretty obvious. I mean, you know, I, I mean, to me, the, the, the problem is not the problem, but the, um, the project, I guess, is what does it look like when, you know, you teach something like grappling through a lens of movement optimization and mobility uh, you know, training and development, you know, kind of, you know, with the background that I have and all that. And that's actually really interesting to me. You know, that's kind of fun, you know, to think about like, you know, how would you design a curriculum that doesn't go super down the deep end of trying to do like a lot of just, just mobility training? Like how do you incorporate it into the actual skill training? And that's, that's an interesting thing to think about because on the one hand you do want to try and keep you know your your, your skill training a little or, and your and your attribute development separate right but thinking about kind of the time that people have and the time that people are willing to do the i mean like for example you know the, the, the there's there's the joke in in bjj about purple belt skipping warm-ups right like because they just want to show up and not even and some and you know just drill and roll which I, I don't know, that may or may not be true. I, I haven't seen that, but obviously if it's a meme, then it, it happens enough. I mean, just like blue belts disappearing, I suppose. But um, so the question is, you know, how do you, you know, or at least for me is, you know, how do you design a curriculum that, that kind of incorporates all those things? And 
makes them beneficial to to the individual you know so it's, it's things like you know do you sit down with people and say and maybe it becomes part of like uh, after after a point you know you say to people hey you know what kind of game are you looking to play okay well let's let's work at those at let's you know let's work let's work on something that develops those attributes for example or you know to start out do you you know, do you do really short focused warm ups? you know, for example, um, you know, like when I warm myself up, uh, you know, it's a lot of just, you know, joint circles, standing durability, some dynamic stretches, but things that I think are going to help directly with what I'm about to do. Um, and then, you know, how do you develop supporting material around that for, you know, I mean, you know, do you take, maybe you start taking more of like a, like a PT approach where you give people homework and, you know, either they do it or they don't. And again, you, you try and figure out how to work that back into, what it is that is happening in the actual training so there's some kind of incentive for people to to do that stuff outside of work or outside of like training right um yeah so that's that's kind of a really long-winded way of putting it. as far as like boil it down to one statement it's basically teaching jujitsu through a lens of somebody who's primarily uh, a, a mobility coach and, and you know movement optimization and development coach right and I, I like that because it hits on a lot of things. Like, like, to, like for me, um, I, I know there's like this, I don't know, meme, joke, snark point, whatever you want to call it in the fitness industry about like, you know, how everybody wants to work with, with athletes or everybody wants to work with elite, elite athletes because it's prestige or something. Me personally, I just want to work with people like that because I'm really interested in the processes behind developing specific attributes. I mean, that's kind of like the... The whole that that's my software engineering nerd brain right like what's what's the algorithm you know and uh i, I think that's going that's honestly that's why i got into mobility training um not to and i'm not saying that like you know mobility training or movement training is like you know more intelligent or requires a greater degree of of, of anything than anything else i mean everything is you know, it, you know every, everything has its has its little nuances right that whether it's s and c whether it's you know nutrition whether it's you know whether it's um just you know gen pop training i mean even gen pop training right has, has its own little like nuances and that's why they have you know group fitness certifications and um but that was just the thing that interested me because probably because it was the thing that had um i guess the thing that i saw that was most applicable to myself so so yeah and then like i said to take at least for me realizing that developing those attributes had a probably the, the biggest carry over to what I was doing in, in, in my own personal performance space. I mean, next to, of course, strength and, you know, strength and conditioning. Um, and that actually is kind of an interesting point because, you know, I had, I had a decent strength base before I started doing mobility. So I kind of wonder, hmm, you know, what, 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 what if I had had, what, what if I'd had mobility first and then, and then strength? Well, you know, I wonder, I wonder if I would think the opposite. Um, which is really interesting because, 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 you know, when it comes down to it, I don't actually look at one over the other. I think, I think there's a continuum there, you know, mobility. I mean, you guys probably heard mobility, stability, strength. And actually that's something I want to touch on in a couple of weeks. I, I, I had gotten a question on Instagram about, you know, kind of what my thoughts on were about mobility and stability as, as it relates to performance. And so we'll definitely get a little nerdy and dive into that. But, um, yeah, actually, let's 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 go ahead and wrap this up. Actually, we're coming up on fifteen minutes, and I want to keep this short. So, in a nutshell, that that's kind of my goal for fitness, and that's kind of why I'm I'm doing things like, you know, the the brand ambassador work. That's kind of why I'm doing Rise Forty Five, and it, it's kind of like, and and I'll and I'll talk a little bit more about that specific why down the road, but um, but yeah, it's it's all kind of leading up to that thing that I said. Uh, earlier, you know, which is, you know, you know, what, what would it be like to run a jiu-jitsu program through the, through the lens of not just my own phys physical fitness education or personal training education, but also knowing what the world we're going into could be like. And like I said, in a lot of ways, I'm glad I haven't actually, you know, I didn't stick to my original plan and, and start, start some kind of program, uh, which wouldn't have been a jiu-jitsu program, like, you know, last year, like, like I had originally been on track for. So, yeah, uh, one more note. Tomorrow is Free Info Friday. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live stream it on Instagram for now. At some point, I'll try and figure out Restream or StreamYard and, and stream to a bunch of different platforms. But um, not too late to get questions in or hop on the stream tomorrow. I'm not sure what time it is. I'll, uh, obviously, I'll, I'll put some stuff on my story before I go live. So if you want to jump on, they can and ask questions. But um, 
Yeah, I think that's what I got for today. So thanks for listening, and I will see you tomorrow. Cheers.